Thank you, Jason. So <clears throat> I'll give the first part of the talk, and then Isuru will uh, uh, show you some benchmarks. So Simengine is a fast symbolic manipulation library in C++. And so what I'll talk about today, I'll, after introduction, I'll talk about the features, about what Simengine can do. And um, then we'll show you demo. And I'll have some Jupyter notebooks in Python, Ruby, and Julia. Um, then I'll have some section about why we chose C++ and also how to write safe code in C++. Then I'll talk about uh, the internals of Simengine. Then Isuru will talk about, and I'll talk about some roadmap, how we plan to incorporate Simengine in SimPy. And Isuru will show you some benchmarks against Maple, Mathematica, and other libraries. So Simengine is written in C++ and has thin wrappers in many languages. So we start with C, and then we have wrappers in Python, Ruby, Julia, uh, Haskell as well, and uh, there can be more. The main, you can see the main um, website that the first repository right here is um, a pure C++ library, and then that's the, that's the whole Simengine, and then those .py, .rb, .gl are Python, Ruby, and Julia wrappers. It's MIT licensed, it was started in around 2012, it has about 35 contributors so far, it runs on Linux, OS X, and Windows, and we made sure it compiles with every compiler that we could get a, our hands on. So GCC, Clang, Intel um, on Linux, GCC, Apple Clang on uh, Mac, um, MSVC, MinGW on Windows. And it's part of the uh, SymPy organization. Um, for example, we share Google Summer of Code and so on. Uh, but the C++ library is Python independent. It doesn't have anything to do with Python. Um, the goals of Simengine, we want it to be the fastest symbolic manipulation library, both open source or commercial, uh, serve as the core for SymPy and Sage, uh, and as well to serve as kind of the default manipulation library in other languages, thanks to the thin wrappers in Ruby, Julia, and others. So SymPy can do a lot of things, and it's very useful to a lot of people, but even at this conference, one of the common complaints is that sometimes it can be slow. Uh, typically, when you have to handle very large expressions, for example, you have large expressions and you want to generate some C code or Fortran code, it can be pretty slow. Or many times the expressions are small or medium size, but you have simply a large calculation and it's just uh, slow. So we've tried a couple different approaches in the past, how to speed this up. We tried, um, well, of course, pure Python, but we tried PyPy, we tried Cython. I even wrote as a, a core in C. Problem with C is that you have to handle memory allocation by hand. It, it's tough. We also investigated Julia, Rust, Scala, JavaScript. Uh, eventually, we settled on C++, and I'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, so what can it do? Uh, it, can have, it has the usual symbolic manipulation um, features, it has additional multiplication operation, you know, symbols, it has elementary functions, it has uh, special functions, some special functions, it has differentiation, substitution matrices, uh, we have polynomials, and we mainly just call some polynomial, specialized polynomial libraries, uh, called, one is called Piranha, that can handle multivariate polynomials very, very efficiently, as you'll see from the benchmarks, and uh, Flint which is for univariate polynomials. It can do series expansion, printing, parsing, numerical evaluation, double and arbitrary precision. So let's go and let me show you some, some demo. So as I learned literally last week, uh, in, if you use Jupyter, I've ever used it with Python so far, but it turns out if you have a notebook in Ruby or Julia, all you have to do is click on uh, the notebook and it opens a new window and uh, it has a different backend. And you can also see the different backends in, if you click here, you can see all the backends here. So let's start with Python. So it's in Conda Forge, if you can install it uh, by installing the Python sim engine package. And um, it installs the Python wrappers, it installs a separate Conda package for the sim engine itself, which is in C++, and then all the dependencies. So you create some symbols, and then you use it just like you would use SymPy. 
Um, that's a Python integer, uh, but here, here is some expression with uh, Simengine integer, creates a rational. Um, then we can do symbolic evaluation. If I do just square root of two, then it keeps it as a square root of two symbolically, then you can do numerical evaluation. If you use precision 53 bits, it's using double precision, so it's very fast. If you want more digits, then it's using GMP. Um, and you can have arbitrary uh, precision. Um, you can do complex numbers. Then it has functions, and they simplify just like in SymPy, as you would expect. It has undefined functions. You can do differentiation of this undefined function, or uh, it has, of course, all the special functions uh, work. It has substitution, expansion. It can do series expansion, except that um, in the Python wrappers, we didn't wrap. So the C++ library has the series, and you'll see it in the benchmarks, but we didn't wrap it in Python yet. So this is calling back to, into SymPy. That's why it was slow. Um, has matrices, has lambdify, uh, and the lambdify is implemented in C++, so it's mu much faster. Um, and then what happens with functions from SymPy that don't have, that are not implemented in C++? As an example, we did not implement spherical harmonics yet. So I import them from SymPy, that's this line. And then X is a Symengine symbol. And uh, if you mix and match it like that, Symengine will convert it um, the expression to Simengine if it knows. And if it doesn't know, like in this case, we have a special C++ class that uh, can be uh, overridden in Python or other wrappers. And it, if you implement things like differentiation, substitution, then it um, just works. So for example, in this last line, I took this expression T, which contains a Simengine symbol, that's a C++ class, and this kind of undefined class and the Python wrapper has a pointer in there, so it knows it's a spherical harmonic, and it keeps the pointer to the SymPy object. So in here, if I do the substitution, I substitute y to minus y. You can see that this y gets to minus y, and it gets propagated to SymPy. SymPy knows how to simplify it, and then it gets con this part here gets converted back to SymEngine. So that way, it allows you to uh, work with uh, your expressions, even if they are not implemented in C++ yet. And eventually we'll have a spherical harmonics, of course, so then it will get much faster. So let's uh, try the Ruby example. How many of you use Ruby? One. <laughs> you are the only one. Uh, I don't use Ruby here. Um, but you can tell here, uh, you see the ni nice logo. It's running on the Ruby 2.3 backend. Um, so this ASCII art is implemented in C++, and then it goes to C, and now to Ruby. So it works. Um, so you create symbols, and then just like in Python, you use the exact same um, way to compose expressions, and all the, all the computation is handled in C++, just like in Python. Um, and I'll just kind of go quicker, just so that you get an idea that it, it works. Um, for example, these integers are handled by Symengine. We call into GMP, so it's handled by GMP. I commented this out. Uh, so we, by default, we the only hard dependency is GMP that can handle large integers. Um, for um, MPFR is another library that one could use, but one has to install it and. Uh, Ruby is not in Conda yet, and it's very hard for me to install it, so I didn't install it in the Ruby wrappers. But, but if you install it, it will work. Um, you know, it has all those functions. They simplify just like in Python, um, you know. <clears throat> and then it has all, all these, uh, um, some number, number theory um, function, functionality as well. So let's go to uh, uh, Julia example. H how many of you use Julia? One, two, three. Um, so in Julia, you install it by, you call PKG clone, and then and you give it the Julia bindings, GitHub repository, and then uh, you build it 
it builds the C++ library first, and then it builds the Julia wrappers. Um, so import it again. Let's try that the ASCII art works. Uh, you, can, you import variables. This var is a Julia macro. It injects those symbols into your namespace. Um, again, it uh, works. You can try a you know bigger number if you want. You can see it's immediate. All the printing is done in C++. Um, substitution assigned. So S Julia is uh, using a, a multiple dispatch. So sign is dispatched on the uh, types of the arguments. In this case, pi uh, is coming from sim engine, so it's calling sim engine pi. All right. Let's get back to our presentation. So why we chose to implement that in C++? So first of all, it's fast, very, very fast in the release mode, but it can be made safe in debug mode. Um, I'll talk about it on the next slide. Uh, the compiler also helps because um, it can catch a lot of problems at compile time. Uh, and it's just one language to learn. Um, so we don't have these layers of C++, C, Python, only one repository, and if th something goes wrong, then we have to dig in to figure out, is it in the Python wrappers, is it in C, is it in C++? Uh, since the main repository is only C++, then people can just come, and they, the, that's the only language they have to learn and know. All the tests are in C++, everything is there. And then the Python wrappers are very, very thin. Um, and then it also allows us to have bindings to other languages, um, as you've seen. So in, in release mode, uh, C++ allows uh, direct memory handling, which is very, very important in this case. Allocation, deallocation, uh, it can tweak how things are done, how things are represented, how dictionaries work, and we did tweak all these things. Um, it is also possible to really play with the code to essentially uh, get the optimal speed. And it also allows a reasonably high level abstractions. Uh, what is not so, but so much well known about C++ is that it actually is a safe language in debug mode as long as you use a subset of C++, as long as you uh, do not use any pointers or references, but use classes. So instead of raw pointers, you have to use a PTR class. Instead of a, a reference counting pointers, we use Teuchos RCP. Teuchos is a library in Trellinos. And it has the advantage that it can give you uh, sort of raw pointer access wrapped in this PTR, sorry. And in debug mode, um, it will give you an exception at runtime if that pointer becomes dangling. So it literally cannot check fault. Um, and so the, it is restrict, we are restricting what we can use from C++, but the rules that we follow can be checked visually in a pull request. So if somebody submits a pull request, I can go in and just quickly check, yes, no, no raw pointers, it's using the RCP correctly, and so, it, um, and as long as those are followed, then it cannot check fault in debug mode. Um, and eventually, the hope is that Clang um, will have some kind of uh, plugins where that can check these static uh, rules. And uh, this, this PTR class is in release mode is as fast as a raw pointer. And I checked that. Um, it, I checked GCC assembly, and it generates the exact same assembly as a raw pointer if you pass it to functions or return from a function. Um, so it's as fast as if you use raw pointers. And of course, in release mode, it could check fault. Uh, and, the, and the workflow is that if that happens, you switch to debug mode, run the same thing again, um, and you'll get an exception. Um, so uh, just a few words about the internals of SimEngine. Um, add addition is using a dictionary to represent it. Here's an example of some um, addition. It, it's represented in a dictionary that like 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 here. So x y is uh, the the key. The coefficients are stored as values, and then this five, this constant, is stored separately. And the multiplication, the same way, except now the powers are stored as uh, values. And all those expressions are reference counted pointers, just like in Python. Uh, so all the algorithms are implemented using a visitor pattern. Um, which means that each algorithm, like differentiation, is implemented in its own file. And uh, we figured out a way how to do it with just two virtual function calls. And so you can use your, you have, you can have your own code as a separate, you install SimEngine as a library using Conda, and in your own code, you can implement this visitor pattern. And you'll get a very, very fast algorithm working with SimEngine. If that is not fast enough, you would like to have just one virtual function call. Um, that can also be done, and we have it there, but, and it's still a separate file, but it's using some macro tricks, and the compiler has to have access to the file. So then you have, it, you have to submit a pull request to SimEngine. And the difference between the two is, is not that big, actually. 
Uh, I talked about it. Simengine converts uh, simple expressions to the corresponding objects in Simengine, and those that it cannot do, it, it wraps. Um, and um, a few words how we plan to use it in SymPy. So there are some structural differences. For example, in SymPy, I, the, the complex number unit, imaginary unit, is an imaginary unit class. And then it's using addition to kind of construct a complex expression. Simension is using a complex class, so it's much faster. But that means it's not fully compatible. It cannot be made compatible. But I view it as sort of like Python 2 and 3, which are also fundamentally not compatible. For example, meta classes are just done differently. But you can write a compatibility layer so that um, SymPy itself can, the same source code will work with SymPy as well as SymEngine as, as a backend. And we already have a pull request where we are implementing that, and it works. And you'll see it in the benchmarks. So Isuru will now, will now come, and he will talk about uh, about the benchmarks. Thank you. Uh, so uh, for the benchmarks, uh, we tested SimEngine Master with GMP and Flint. Uh, we also tested the uh, latest releases of Gynac, SymPy, Mathematica, and Maple. Right. Okay, uh, the first benchmark is to uh, uh, expand this expression uh, for various values of n. Okay, let me just go ahead. Okay, uh, so uh, this shows uh, several CSS uh, for this benchmark. Uh, the plots are in log-log uh, scale. Uh, so as you can see, uh, SimEngine, Gynac, Mathematica, SimPy, they all have the same gradient, so they have the same time complexity. Uh, uh, but the, uh, there is a const, uh, constant speed up uh, for Sim Engine. Uh, Maple uh, is a little bit different. Uh, we think that uh, that's because Maple switches to a polynomial uh, <coughs> a polynomial uh, uh, manipulation. Uh, so that uh, just to check, we checked with Piranha, uh, which uh, which is a polynomial manipulation library. As you can see, uh, the graphs are pretty similar. That means like uh, Maple is uh, switching automatically to polynomials, uh, and then do the calculation and then switch back. Okay. Okay. Then uh, we have this uh, uh, benchmark from the Gynac benchmark suit. Uh, so what this does is uh, it uh, takes uh, equals a naught plus a one plus uh, sum of signs and then square it and then expand it. And then we replace A0 with uh, the negative of the sum of signs and then expand it again and then uh, it should uh, fall back to A1 squared. Okay. Right. Uh, as you can see, uh, Sim Engine is uh, faster than uh, all the other uh, CSS we tried. Uh, Maple has a little jump uh, from N equals 300 because uh, Maple is using uh, garbage collection and the GC kicks in around n equals 300. Um, so all these have the same time complexity except Mathematica, it has a uh, little different slope. Right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, then uh, the next uh, benchmark we tried was uh, expanding sine of cos x plus 1 around x equals 0. Uh, this uh, uh, this series expansion would give uh, coefficients with uh, a lot of uh, symbolic uh, uh, coefficients. Uh, so that's why we're uh, measuring it. Uh, with this one, uh, Sim Engine has like uh, 10 times speed up than the uh, uh, second best thing. Uh, 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 Mathematica is just something weird. And then uh, <laughs> that's why it's uh, a polynomial way. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the last benchmark is uh, we uh, looked at generating equations of motion uh, from pi uh, okay. uh, So what this does is this uh, sorts out the core of SimPy, uh, and then it uses SimEngine as the core uh, for this benchmark. Uh, the, uh, most of the code is written in Python, but uh, for the core part, uh, we are switching to SimEngine. Uh, as you can see, we get a... Uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, speed up uh, at n equals 50. It takes around like uh, 15 uh, minutes uh, with SimPy only, but it goes down to 14 seconds uh, with SimEngine. Okay. And you can 
You can see from this uh, graph that uh, the slope is the same, so the complexity is the same, but SymPy is 60 times fa uh, SymEngine is 60 times faster. Uh, so the summary, SymPy aims to be the fastest C++ symbolic manipulation library. We have thin wrappers to other languages, Python, Ruby, Julia, C, and we want it to be usally, easily usable as an optional backend in SymPy, as well as Sage and all the other languages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andre and Nasiru. We have about five minutes for questions. I want to start here. I'll come to you with the mic. So that was really impressive. Uh, I'm curious, do you want people building stuff on top of simengine.py right now? Is it stable enough to do that? Uh, yes, <laughs> I would like that, but um, um, we are still uh, developing it, so we you know, <clears throat> don't want things to break, um, but it things might break. So we are, I know, literally last two weeks figuring out how to best incorporate it in SymPy. You can see from uh, the, this graph was done, um, you know, this, uh, this PyDive benchmark. It's done on a pull request and we have a pretty good idea how to do that. Once we kind of settle this, we'll document it and then it should uh, be very stable. And the idea is that you can just use SymPy and just co have an environment variable use SymEngine and it can flip to use uh, SymEngine. And of course, it, SimEngine will always be a subset of SimPy, so, but as long as you use only a subset of SimPy that's implemented in SimEngine, it should work like that, so you don't have to worry about anything. Another question? Did you do anything special in the wrappers uh, for optimization purposes instead of using, um, like, I mean, auto-generation? I mean, auto-generated code is hard to debug and everything, but did you do anything very special we, to make it extra fast? Uh, well, I spend a lot, we spend a lot of time in the C++ itself. Uh, as far as the wrappers, we use Cython. Uh, in fact, we use Cython to wrap the C++ directly, but th the point is that uh, all these benchmarks, all the time is spent in C++, so it almost doesn't matter how you wrap it. That's kind of the beauty, as long as the C++ itself is fast, and then we, we spend a lot of time playing with all, um, many, many things we had to try in C++. Another question? Uh, so I might have missed it, but is there any integration yet? Uh, what kind of integration? Uh, just symbolic. Oh, no, no. We plan to, um, it, but that symbolic integration is one of the most complicated algorithms in SymPy. Uh, there is actually another way to do symbolic integration by, uh, it's called Ruby, uh, R-U-B-I. It's, um, it, it's, it's a person in Alberta who implemented the Mathematica package. Oh yeah, and it's, it's awesome. And he uh, also sp um, implemented SymPy generation, and so it actually works in SymPy a little bit. I still have an open pull request. We welcome anybody to <laughs> who can help us finish it. Uh, but yes, this could be, I think, very useful in C++ because it's just rules, and it, that can be auto-generated, implemented in C++. It should be very, very fast. We have time for more. Please re repeat that. I'm, I'm the SymPy person. <laughs> uh, I, but yes, I talk to other SymPy people as well. And uh, yes, we definitely want to integrate it. <laughs> no, it's a good question. Any more? We've got uh, time for one more, I believe. Yep. You already had one, right? So uh, please pardon my ignorance, but um, as somebody who's used Mathematica for a long, long time, um, are there any features in the symbolic computation in Mathematica that you're planning on implementing, or is this pretty much like something I could convince a PI to start using? Um, so SymPy is the library where we are trying to implement every single thing that Mathematica has, and if there is still something that Mathematica can do and SymPy cannot talk to me afterwards, we'll, uh, we'd like to get it in. And as far as SymEngine, we are starting with the things or applications where people use SymPy and it just was too slow. And so that's where we are starting. Uh, if people find this interesting and they want to implement, and they will implement things, I'm not against. So um, as long as it's in C++, it follows our rules, uh, it can go in. Okay, let's give them a hand. Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs>